or so. Why are they involved? Yeah. Why, because, did, why did capital just buy those lots? Because we always set up separate LLCs to purchase and develop property. Even four of them in one project? Sure. Do you have an option over the other two that the private? We, we have purchase agreements for the other two properties. Okay. Regarding the 20 that you do own, during what period of time did you acquire them? Uh, I believe we acquired the first one actually in 2013, 2012 or 2013. I don't remember without going back and looking at the transfer record. Most of them were in the last four months of 2017, is that correct? Uh, no, they were spread over that uh, really a five year period. More towards the end, yes. Well, it's interesting. I see two, it's almost all over 2017 to the Animal County Auditor, but let's move on. How did you find this site? How did we find the site? Right. How did you come to decide you would like to develop this site? Well, uh, one of the things we do as real estate developers is that we spend a lot of time driving around looking for opportunities, and it's just part of our business. Um, and one of the things that's critical for us is to find the what we consider a plot site, uh, and so. We look in areas, kind of midtown areas like Hyde Park, um, the Rookwood area. Kenwood is a great example of that. Uh, downtown, um, northern Kentucky along the riverfront. Um, more urbanized uh, locations within sometimes suburban locations. Um, for example, the downtown of um, uh, Westchester. Uh, is another example where we spend time and we just go out in the car and we drive and drive and drive to find sites. What I'm trying to get at is did the township administration draw your attention to the site? We all we we go to the township, okay, as we did in this case, and we said, hey, we're looking around, we see this and we see that. Tell us what might be an opportunity uh, for development. And apparently, you got positive feedback from the township on that. We talked to the township about several sites here. Uh, this was one of three or four that we talked to them about. And who at the township did you talk to? We talked to Greg Bickford initially, township administrator, and then we talked to uh, we talked to all the trustees. And was that in the fall of 2017 or way back in 2013? Oh, we've been when we bought the first property. Uh, we first talked to Mr. Bickford. Uh, we talked to Mr. Weeman, Mr. Connor, Mr. Bishop, uh, just to just to get a sense of hey, you know. What's the feeling for this area? What do you guys see? What what do, what do you think might happen here? Um, you know, and again, this is the standard operating procedure for us. Same thing if we're working in the city of Cincinnati. We go to city council, we go to the mayor and say, hey, we're looking at half a dozen sites here. Tell us what you think. I find it interesting that you bought the properties outright, 20 of them, without any assurance that you could get the zoning you wanted. Isn't that kind of unusual for you to do? Well, here's the thing from our perspective. Um, a, a lot of companies bigger than us will, will do that all the time. We're not quite as big as some others, but um, we looked at these sites and said this is great real estate. Uh, and so we're going to go out and buy them. And we're confident that we will be able to create a development here uh, that will work. But we took the risk. Did any of the township trustees or administration assure you that you could get absolutely park not. Park zoning? No, and they, and and we still don't have that guarantee, and we're hung out there for a lot of money. But we're we're we believe in the site, we believe in the township, um, and you know we we've taken this risk on other sites as well. Mr. Cesaro, uh, do you live in Sycamore Township? I do not. Where are your offices located? Downtown Cincinnati. The exact address, please. 226 East 8th Street, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45202. I understand that this is a little awkward question. On October 17th, during the time you were buying these properties, that you made an $1,100 campaign contribution to Mr. Weedman. Is that correct? That's correct. You know you're living. That's correct. 
what motivated you to get such a large contribution? Well, um, he was uh, running for election. We had had conversations with him, the other trustees. Um, we felt that there was value uh, in being able to have basically, you know, frank discussions with all the trustees. We knew he was running for re-election. And this is similar to campaign contributions that we make all over the town and the region. Did you give contributions to any other candidates for Sycamore County trustee? Uh, we did not at that time. Have you made any since then? Uh, I don't believe so. Dave, do you? Did your company reimburse you for the contribution? Uh, no. We have no other questions for this witness. Pardon me for asking you a couple more quick questions. Sure. You, in your presentation, you showed us some alternative uses of the site. Correct. Uh, is it your assertion that you could go ahead and build those alternative uses without coming back to the board for your approval? Um, the my understanding is, in talking to Mr. Bedford, and you know we haven't we haven't taken it further down the road because we hope not to do that. Um, but under the SBI, if we stay under the building height and ISR requirements, it's my understanding that uh, what we need to do is apply for a zoning certificate, not get approval from the trustees. You're saying that the SPI would apply even without further approval? That's my understanding. Again, I haven't done an in-depth research on it because we haven't gone that direction yet. So you may or may not be correct as you're acknowledging I believe I'm correct, but I don't. I can't tell you that with 100% certainty today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Barrett. <clears throat> can can we call uh, proponents to speak? Yes, that's fine. If that's where you are. Yeah, that's where we are. Um, okay, um, is the uh, uh, is Jay from the school board here? Oh, okay. Um, could you identify yourself, name and address for the record, please, and confirm that you have been sworn in? Sure, I'm Jay Phillips, I'm superintendent at Deer Park Schools. Uh, our address is 4131 Madison Avenue, uh, 45236, since 95. And, and I have been sworn in. Sworn in. I will acknowledge that. Okay. So first, I just want to thank uh, you guys for giving me the opportunity to speak here this evening. Uh, Superintendent of Deer Park Community City School District, I feel it's my responsibility to advocate for our students and to publicly speak to issues that will have a profound impact on our school district. This development is definitely one of those issues. While I understand that there are pros and cons to everything, and I definitely respect that my opinion isn't the only one here tonight. From where I sit, there are nothing but positives from this development for our school district. As most of you know, we just opened the doors to a brand new beautiful elementary building thanks to the taxpayers of Deer Park Schools. The positive comments about the building from students, teachers, parents, and community members have been nothing short of overwhelming. The improvements to Amity Elementary were long overdue. The culture and positive climate in that building right now are amazing, and you can feel the sense of pride that everyone has in their new elementary school. My goal is to try to start creating that same feeling at our junior senior high school. A major part of that goal, and also a piece of our new strategic plan, is to try to complete the, these much needed capital improvement projects without having to go back to our taxpayers to pay for it. Our five year strategic plan challenges us to actively seek alternate funding options. This project is one of those. When I speak of capital improvements at the junior senior high school, I'm talking about things like air conditioning, renovation of Crawford Auditorium, new roofs that are in desperate need of repair, new windows, fixing up the tennis courts that are currently a major eyesore, giving the hallways and classrooms a facelift, facelift and my list can go on and on. I want the very best for the students, teachers, and families of the Deer Park Community City School District. 
projects like the one we are discussing this evening don't come around very often. I think it would be a huge mistake not to take advantage of this amazing opportunity. Not only do I think it would be a huge mistake, but I can tell you that the nearly 300 signatures of Sycamore Township residents that we collected in a short time also think it would be a mistake. Township trustees, when you are making your vote this evening, I implore you to think of your park schools and the impact that this wonderful opportunity will have on our 1,300 students, the families, and the entire Deer Park School community. I thank you for your time and for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, Mr. Mayor, before you begin, you mentioned that uh, you have 300 signatures. Nearly 300. Have those been presented? I will present them now. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your hanging around here to answer my questions. And I'll be very brief. Would you acknowledge that the $1.2 million that you will receive from capital is not a gift, not a donation, not a contribution, but an advancement on taxes you would get later on if this is approved? You know, that, that is, that's correct. And when I, when I heard earlier this evening somebody yell out of bribery, what I'm having a hard time understanding is that this revenue is, is, would be the school districts anyhow. Um, so it would be hard money. Uh, we just asked for it up front because, you know, I, as I mentioned in, in my statement, we just opened a brand new elementary school and we're sending those kids to junior senior high school, which for those, those of you that have been here for junior senior high school, it's, it's taking a step back in time. When you walk into that building, uh, no AC for our kids, and there's just a list of capital improvement projects that we'd like to get done. Um, If you had not been able to negotiate this one point two million dollar payment up front, would you still be supporting this zoning rule? That was a big sticking point for us, and, and we weren't there until we got to that one point two million. So if somebody else had raised the money elsewhere and offered you a check to not support this zoning approval, you might have taken that opportunity. Well, How so? It's not a hero. Well, this isn't a court of law. We're not following strict rules of evidence. If he can answer the question, he can answer it. Here's what I would say. You know, in my statement, as I mentioned, our strategic plan is to find alternate funding because what I don't want to have to do as a superintendent is go back to the taxpayers to, to raise money for a capital improvement or uh, anything else. Um, so what I would do is, is weigh all options to figure out what, what is in the best interest of our kids and our families. Have you explored the option of some kind of fundraising effort from your alumni? We've done quite a bit of that, actually. We just uh, raised nearly a million dollars for a turf field five years, three years ago, probably now. Uh, we do that all the time, uh, myself and, and our board and our director of business operations. We're constantly thinking about how can we alternatively raise money to do things that we need to do in our school district without more than the taxpayers. And the, the field improvements were a higher priority with you than the air conditioning? That that was that was a it was at the time I was not the superintendent either, um, but I was throwing a question when you weren't there. I was in the school district. I just was not the superintendent. All right, thank you. No other questions for Mr. Any other questions from the board? I think we're going to kind of be. I get the impression of a wrap or fire witnesses here. If you want to. Is it okay if yeah, does anybody have an objection if he just sits there or other <laughs> having to get up and back and up and back? Yep. Any other I'll questions from anyone? Uh, yeah. Do you know when the township would notify people of this? Yeah. Can we get, sir, can we get your name? Steve Howard. Steve Howard? Yeah. Howard. And I, I did not I hear your question. I, I didn't hear your question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, did the township, do you know when the, how many times or when the township would have first told people about this? The, sell, the selling of the, uh, the land or what? Uh, no, the, uh, the, the proposal. To, to okay. 
I'm still not sure I understand your question. Sure. No, he wants to know. Sir, why don't you come in and so we can hear you? Since, uh, come all the way in. Give him a microphone. Thank you. Um, the question is just uh, since we were told that this impacts 20,000 residents, I was just wondering when the township, how many times, and when the township has notified residents of this so that we could be informed and could either support it or oppose it. Are you asking him? I'm asking the township. Now, this is your yeah. opportunity to ask him a question. Well, I thought this was relevant since. No, not this is, not this is cross examination of that witness. If no. you don't have a question for him, then so we don't get an answer to that. Now. Not right now. Not, not right now. Later. Later. I don't want this back even happen. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any any other questions for Mr. Phillips? Okay, Mr. Barrett. I'd like to call up Mr. David Kubicki. I'm going to sit down so I'm going to sit down so I guess I get cross-examined. Um, I'm David Kubicki. Uh, we are a business owner at 8200 North Curie Drive. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. You can hear me? Okay. I'm also a developer and I'm also the president of the Columbia Township Trustees, a nearby community I'm sure you all are familiar with. And I guess just to kind of lighten the load here a little bit, uh, these guys are good guys, and this is a good project. I understand the sensitivity and the uh, emotions involved with the, the, this group of residents and how it impacts them. It's always a balancing act for the trustees to have to go do what I get challenged with, which is what are you doing to promote economic development? How do you keep my taxes low? <clears throat> and how do you keep, get the schools better without constantly raising taxes? This is a good project. These guys are good local guys. And uh, I guess if a project like this came to our community, I'd be bending over backwards trying to figure out a way to do it. And this is an awkward process of getting cross-examined and everything else. I mean, it would really certainly set the tone. What's that? Uh, so anyway, but the, uh, the trustees do care. I mean, at any time we've ever come into Columbia Township to do a project, the first thing they say is, is please do what you can to please the neighboring residents. Sometimes it's not easy to do. Uh, to balance the act of uh, actually doing economic development and pleasing every single resident. It's very tough to do. I know Mr. LaBarber ran on a campaign to listen to the residents as well. I know Mr. Weedman and Mr. Connor have always said, uh, you know, make sure you take care of the residents in any development deals we've ever done. Um, <clears throat> uh, they have, okay? And they, they're always known as being tough but fair, but it's a good place to do business in uh, Sycamore Township. And without economic development, um, I mean, it's a major part of what they're going to get judged on is economic development and keeping taxes at bay and low. Um, <clears throat> and this project, I think, personally, from every project we've been involved with developed like this, will help the neighboring property values. So I can't put a value on the emotions and what everybody feels like it might do to their to their property, but it will raise the property values with this kind of development. I could cite. Uh, we did we did a project for Tri Health over uh, right up at Galbraith Road, and all those neighboring houses around there have generally gone up and wanted more money for their houses as a result of it. So as far as the financial aspect of it, it is a plus. Uh, I go look at Marymount when Rick Riley developed his office condominiums and things. I mean, excuse me, his residential condominiums there. He got fought over to do it. Huge economic boom, and all the property values around there uh, <clears throat> did improve. And I think people now that it's up have generally been uh, appreciate that it did in fact go. Um, <clears throat> but you know, as far as filling the room with all the people that are against it, you have to balance that with the fact that you have a lot of people in this community that are going to be challenging these guys if they don't generate economic development and keep taxes at bay. And it's one of the lowest, the lowest tax communities in Hamilton County. Um, with us in Columbia Township, we're trying to improve our schools, and this is the way it works. We're looking for we look for new developments that help generate revenues to help the schools. That is the way the process works. It's not bribery, it's, it's economic development. Um, and as far as, you know, the only other thing I'd say as far as some of the points that Mr. Fusaro brought up before, if you did all of this here, you're gonna have all the same traffic pattern. Everybody coming at eight and everybody leaving at five. So I don't think it's insignificant to have a good mixed use development where the retail comes in throughout the day, uh, the office all comes in at eight, and generally leaves at five, um, the hotel just is, is, is sporadic, and, uh, and the residents, most of them are probably moving there because they're going to walk to their residence. And as I can look, if you broke each of these down, you take something like the residential component, 
I mean, there's less residents coming in here, way less than something like Sturbridge, and you never go look at any traffic issue driving by Sturbridge. So sometimes this stuff gets put up on paper and numbers get projected, but I think the traffic issues in general compared to what where Kenwood is now are going to be incidental. Um, it's probably, I, I do. I think it's going to be fairly incidental. And he's, do, he's done all the traffic improvements that he's been asked, and it is also, it's a Hamilton County road, not a township uh, trustee issue. It's a Hamilton County engineer that will ultimately police what needs to be done here. Um, and I think, you know, for anybody to take for granted that this is the ground zero for a lot of real estate, you can look at what's going on with Amazon, and if anybody has not been through Tri-County Mall in the last year or two, go walk through there and see what can happen if you don't continue to put together complementary businesses that go shop and, 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 and shop at the local places and everything else. It, you just can't take it for granted. Um, this is a good project. Um, and again, Greg Fusaro and his team, these guys are local guys. I would guess that a lot of you have some of these guys' cell phone numbers. It's not like you're dealing with somebody from New York. This project is going to get redeveloped. These guys are good guys. It's a, a good balance project. And, uh, and I know this is a tough thing to do is to come in front of all you residents. Um, and the whispers of somebody like Jewish Hospital buying it, I mean, that would certainly impact the economic development. Not that the patients aren't shoppers like the office and the, and the uh, residential uses. The economic uh, impact isn't as great. Uh, it's not profit, so I don't I understand they wouldn't be paying any real estate taxes, which would impact the schools. So I would encourage everybody here to, to, to work with Mr. Fusaro and Dave and his team. Uh, they're good guys. It's a good mixed use development, and I think it's got a great impact on immediately on the school district. And it's not a bribe. It's the way the process works, and I think the trustees should find a way to support a project like this. We give anything for anything to have it our community. That that's all I have to say. Uh, any questions from the board? Yeah, I do. Um, David, I'd like to rock and roll with uh, Now you are involved with this development. Not, or, or, or there's a good chance you're going to have a vested interest in this development. Is that true? Not necessarily. We have, we have had discussions about okay. it. That's all, that's all, all, all I want to say. Guys, that's all as I'm you sit there and look with these support candidates, with, 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 I mean, I get supported as a trustee at times by people that believe that I will be reasonable when they deal with things. I have talked to Mr. Fusar about the possibility if he does something, we'd be interested in developing the office component of it. And it's possible. I'm not here for that reason alone. I have other economic development interest in the township, and I want to see economic, reasonable economic development be considered reasonably. That's why I'm here. It is not for this project alone. I have no financial interest in this project. I have no contracts, no anything else. I have discussed it with Mr. Casaro. I've known him for 20 years, and if he wasn't a good guy, I would not be sitting here endorsing him. I wouldn't have endorsed Matt Daniels 20 years ago, or 10 years ago. 